BX can play this champion on both roles. You mentioned life uh, really being an enjoyer of that Rumble bot lane, but it's going to be snatched away from EDG. And knowing how creative they can get with their bot lane and top lane picks, this could be going either way. It could even be going to the jungle. We'll have to see. We'll have to see where that's going to go. I mean, Solo Kill got first pick for the Twisted Fate last time around as well. So maybe EDG just really prioritizing getting a strong champion for Solo Kill up at the top side. It's going to be answered with an Ash on the side of FBX. I'm assuming Dokdom will be taking that. He's played it a couple of times already. Just a very strong Eddie carry right now. Uh, and we'll see whether they want to go for a strong mid laner. Perhaps you could go for the Hui. It's something Care has played a few times. And honestly, with this many mid laners gone, Hui feels quite high priority. Ooh, I love that bot lane. However... That was the bot lane that they lost with versus EDG last time around. They just couldn't necessarily find their footing. But I'm a huge fan of long range engage coming in from the Leona and the uh, and the Ash. You do not have to commit bodies. You have long range engage. And I'd love to see from the EDG from EDG side a few champions that can play you from range to not get close enough. And Huey and Varus do exactly that. Okay, Cassante going to be locked in there. Not going to be the Cassadin. How how depressing. Uh, Cassante not You really wanted surprising. the Cassadin? I mean, look, I just, I love an interesting <laughs> pick. It's not, not exactly good for mid prior, is it? But can take over games. Uh, that takes me back to thinking about Angel. We'll see him play later today. Um, yeah, let's see how this one's going to go, though. The <laughs> way it's taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they're basically saying, look, the Rumble could go jungle, the Rumble could go support. We don't want to deal with Twisted Fate when we're playing Asante. Hey, I mean, it went Shalahu's way last time Solo Kill picked that Twisted Fate. However, of course, it wasn't the Cassante uh, up against him. This time around, it's going to be more tanky style for the side of uh, Shalahu. EDG are missing a lot of engage uh, for a lot of these... Uh, ultimates like the Rumble ult, a lot of the poke coming in from way. You need something, a button for people to, to get them stuck onto these spells. Things like uh, Rel or Nautilus come to mind for the set of EDG, both bringing up really nicely with the virus in the bot lane. Yeah. This is feeling like a pretty solid, like, Viega or Nidley angle for Milky Way as well, where you've got, like, a lot of... CC available from your bot lane to set up four picks that you can then snowball the fight. I really like the, v the Viego angle here from Milky Way. I am curious what we're going to see in that mid lane because do need a bit of AP now for FPX, but Wukong Ooh. instantly locked in for JJ and a Rel as well. That's a combo and a half. Ooh, love that. We said we want some sticking power for EDG, some CC to lock down targets so that the way spells land so that the equalizer yeah. sticks a little bit longer for an extra tick and they did just that with the wukong uh and the rel now another very strong combo right here which we haven't necessarily seen a lot because ari has fallen in priority is the viego plus ari and the reasoning behind that is because they both get reset sort of at the same time if one member falls reset comes in for viego and the ari asterisk here munch Viego, ash leona was the combo they played versus EDG last time they met in summer. And it didn't quite work out for them. Milky Way could not find the reset. They couldn't necessarily coordinate around those objectives on how they want to play them. However, I think this time around, they have many more tools with the Ari and the Cassante added in to the equation. It's Kaz Ari as well. Pretty famous within the league. Uh how he plays this champion it's one like i mean we saw the tax being paid by edg banning the asol banning the yone both care signature picks that ari came through as one of his better ones and i know nymera very impressed by care's ari across the course of last split see how he does against the way from crying but i will say some power picks there the uh, rumble as well available for solo kill crying having a way as well and then you've got the rel wukong combo not to mention leave on a lethality varus that like you said last time around these guys met leave was on that varus and he was chunking people consistently yeah and playing ash in the bot lane for dog down the second you lose that summoner spell early on you lose a lot of that power there is so much sticking power over in the bot lane of fpx the leona in the ash if one old lands you're most yeah. likely dead but if you've taken their summoners early on it becomes so difficult to just walk out 
Well, it's about time we find out how this one goes down, isn't it? EDG versus FPX. Last time around, it was a 2-0 to EDG. FPX, though, the drama's in the past, and it's time for redemption. Let's see if they can rise from the ashes, as it were. I'm going to interrupt the Jios here because Doctor, I'm getting real aggressive. We saw this from Photic the other day as well. Ash is so oppressive at level one and forces a flash out <sighs> from crying. Lovely little start for FPX. That is huge, actually, right here. Way, one of the most, uh, the more immobile champions, if you will, doesn't have any displacement spells for himself. Usually, you would like to push Ari under her tower so she cannot afford to walk into the river to facilitate for Milky Way's Viego right here, but this is not going to be the case. Kryon is going to have to be very, very, very aware and careful of Milky Way's positioning at any given moment, at least for uh, five minutes until he gets his flash back. This could be Care's moment to try and take over that early game that we really wanted to see from FPX. So we'll see if this early game can snowball. Let's see how these lanes are going to go. Milky Way starting on the top side opposite to JJ who started on his bottom side so likely just to be full clears from either jungle I don't really anticipate a Wukong or a Virgo trying to get into these lanes too early on but I am curious to keep an eye on these side lanes as well because you know solo kill versus Shaolau who went pretty Shaolau who favored last time around it's a very different matchup this time though and leave and wink they've got a lot of power once a serrated Dirk's in there not necessarily the strongest level one combo Wow, and what's Care in the mid lane? Oh, a little bit of an engaged bot lane. Care is playing so aggro in the mid lane. He knows he can get the prior. Hits at level two first as well. Bull is the way. A little further down the lane. This is great, great stuff right here for the mid jungle duo of FPX. Again, Viego plus Ari specifically after level six. He sets a pot and level three mid? What? Okay, here we go. Cry and remember, no flash. If Care can go for a flashy, there's the stun. There's the flashy to follow as well. Cry and still surviving, actually. They don't have much damage, but they'll finish the job for first blood. Wow. Great capitalization on the summoner spell that's missing for crying. Again, Care has been playing pretty aggressively, shoving in that wave, playing in Crying's face, chunking him down. That level three for Milky Way as well. Very clutch. Very clutch with the dash forward into the charm as well. Both committing their flashes right there, but it's a little bit less taxing for Ari, I have to say, because in three levels, you do have your ultimate. Two levels now, as he's level four, you do have your ultimate to get out of any trouble if Wukong shows up in your lane. Great, great stuff from yeah. FPX. That's what we wanted to see, right? We wanted the spark back. And this is a level three gank, three minutes in for FPX. Good stuff. Really, really nice. And crucially as well, we literally just said, like, Wukong, Viego, not champs you typically expect to be ganking in the first couple of levels. Milky Way changes that fact because that summoner's on cooldown. Really, really nice stuff. Uh, punishing crying. We'll see if maybe JJ, when he hits level six, I, I don't know if he'll hit level six before Care's Flash is back up, but Care will be six as well. We'll see if he can find an angle there. Like you say, not necessarily as easy against an Ari. Solo kill doing a good job up in that top lane to try and bully Shalahu, but CS still relatively even up there. Also have to remember the void grabs are coming up, so a lot of oh, the support nice will start step. roaming to whoa whoa whoa. That was a Has really nice ghost. sidestep from solo kill to dodge away from the stun and just keep that damage going down. Stuff from solo kill right there. We said we wanted to see the two top laners sort of fist fight, and uh I know Rubble is a pretty good matchup into most tanks. In the top lane, Cassante not being an exception. Uh, back to the Void Grabs, though. A minute and a half, almost, until they start spawning. And you will be seeing a lot of action towards the top. So now, Crying, very importantly, will have his flash up and available, which is going to be of pivotal importance if you want to walk down that river, or up, rather, that river, to try and secure those Void Grabs. Again, Leona is going to be huge for the sort of FPX roaming towards the top side of the map. Locking down targets like that way will be yep. huge in fights to come. Solo kill already having ninja tabbies here as well as he's just recalled and TP back into the lane. Big advantage for him because basically it means now Chala who just can't fight him. He just can't fight that 1v1 at this point. 
being that far behind uh, in terms of items at least milky way though starts this drake off we saw leave and wing resetting we saw dr and life really hard pushing that wave in the bottom side and then a hawk shot will fly over and will spot out jj as well so they know they're totally safe to do this drake FPX really, really clean early game. Not only did they walk in level one, they take the summoner, they capitalize on the summoner with the kill. They have, to, they have taken complete control of the bot side of the map, taken advantage off of leave, resetting towards that bot lane. We saw them shoving all of their spells on the way to take priority into bot side river. So far, so good for FPX. That early game is looking pretty crisp. Well, Crisp, unfortunately, not on FPX anymore. That's uh, a <laughs> long time ago <laughs> since uh, Crisp was part of you the You know, picture. your puns are on point today. <laughs> Breath of Life. You said rising from the ashes, and they're playing Ash. I mean, and now we've got a Crisp pun as well. You're, you're on point today. Super ter good. Terrible puns are my specialty. Life with a flank, though. JJ is going to be in big trouble here. Care has that Spirit Rush available. JJ did get... Oh, nice. Care holds the charm, waits for the CT to land. Easy as you like. It's a free kill, basically, onto JJ. We did mention how Leona was going to be of pivotal importance if they want to walk up in River. Life can lock up a lot of these targets early on. Leona is like such a crucial weapon when it comes to those skirmishes and fights because she doesn't have one, she has two forms of CC, three, six. And she's also very tanky. She adds a lot of damage with her passive onto the other members as well. So it's a pretty... Ooh, just about getting out with a Hex Flash right there. Very clean stuff from FPX. One kill. Oh, goes to yeah. the side of life as well. I mean, he deserved it, right? He, he made it happen pretty much. He did make it happen. Oh, leave oh. his level six. Oh, dear. <laughs> of course the observers didn't miss that one. They never do. Uh, Charm actually lands in the mid lane, but cares out of mana as Wink moves in, but... Nothing to come off that one. I'm surprised. F oh, hang on. Oh. Dogdom makes the ult happen. Flashes out to the side, but JJ is here, and he's level six as well. Dogdom is stepped too far and gets bonked on the head. You know, this is what happens when everyone leaves bot lane and the 80 carries get bored. You'll have leave walking up to Dogdom. He's level six versus level five. Throws out his ult. He's missing. Then Dogdom gets his level six. He's like, you know what? My turn now. Walks up to leave. Throws the ult, gets cleansed. However, JJ is there to back up his uh, board AD carry, I want to say. Solo kill. He's forced to flash away. Dodges the stun there. But will get out with his life. But that's a summoner on cooldown now. Solo kill. Could be a little in danger up on that top side. Let's take another look at this because JJ starts this pretty aggressively, really. Yeah, I don't think you have any business walking up that river if you JJ, especially after you've done it so late after the dragon has gone down. Usually you'll see void grubs being swapped, uh, sorry, traded on the map whilst the dragon is going down. But for FPX to be able to take the dragon reset, get on the map and contest the void grubs, something yeah. has definitely gone wrong right here for EDG. They did not have their priorities in lanes. They didn't wait for them to be pushed up. Rumble couldn't actually assist there and JJ ends up pain with his life and the crazy thing as well is because fbx used so much to get jj they got one group with their smite but then had to back away as well because edg yeah. still had ultimates so we end up in this weird scenario where neither team gets two groups both on one and both teams have kind of conceded it the junglers needed to go back do their clears we saw milky way oh, sorry we saw jj get involved in the bottom side and we'll see if the teams do return up towards those groups i wouldn't be surprised to see JJ just finish off that third one since you can do it so fast with a smite. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, it's an over here for JJ because she knows that VA goes towards the bot side of the map, so it's kind of free for them. However, I do like seeing Milky Way towards the bot side because they have Doctum and Life. Uh, Life is about to hit level six, and if you look at Leaf, he has no summoners. Wink. Oh, Wink stepping way too far forward. So you can see the VA go stealth there as well. Over the wall they go. I mean, Wink just picked apart there. Bit of a fumble from him. I'm not gonna lie, the flash was a little bit of a fumble as well. You've got ultimate from Milky Way. You had another dash coming in from the Ari, so it's not like that any of them would have to commit a summoner. Well, well, Milky Way did commit his flash earlier on in this fight, but it's not like they would commit any other summoner spell to get that kill right there and wink. 
losing his flash is not the biggest of a deal because you do have the hex flash. However, an instant flash engage from Morel can be so huge in these fights to come later on. And again, you mentioned there's yeah. a void grab still left on the top side of the map. There's a dragon coming up uh, on the map right now as well. And EGD would definitely want to stop the stacking from FPX. Honestly, it's fantastic for FPX. Wink not having the flash gauge available as the Drake spawns. They already got that first one. They'd love to get a second one as well. They've got just under a thousand gold lead right now. And you see a lot of that in the pockets of care. Not quite finished an item. But he's getting very close to getting that malignance and getting to the point where Ari just starts ulting every 10 seconds. But EDG hard grouping up. In the mid lane, it looks like Care does have to reset. No TP available, so this will just be Drake for EDG. Yeah, and Milky Way is uh, pinging topside. He wants to finish that Void Grab. Having a little bit of uh, tower pressure, I guess, if they do get the four Void Grabs, could be pretty big for themselves, especially since they don't have... Oh, the arrow. Is this going to hit? If they can hit Solar Kill, he's got no flash. Okay, backs away. <laughs> Good comms from the rest of the team to say, hang on, get out of dodge, there's an arrow coming. Does get I don't out know if FPX's it. bot lane can get out of dodge. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. GG does have his ultimate available, but I guess they're just calling off the plate. I'm kind of surprised, honestly, but maybe just seeing Care wasn't visible on the map at the time. Didn't want to overstay. Yeah, I think it took a little bit, uh, a little bit longer than they anticipated. Diving a level six Leona with summoners up is not the most fun thing you can do. And you had Viego resetting, you had Care moving from mid lane. I think it was a very, very dangerous dive to try and commit to right there. Especially since Crying was not already in position to commit to this dive as well. They didn't necessarily have four members instantly right there. Uh, again, four teams. It also shows a lot in terms of uh, respecting your opponents and respecting the positioning. Starting a play is one thing, but knowing when to back off of it uh, yeah. is another. And this is what a lot of teams struggle with. EDG, happy to see that, hey, they positioned for it. It wasn't the time. They backed off. I will say the CDG roster as well, pretty risk averse, I would say, on average, um, based on yeah. what we've seen in their in their wins. They are reasonably slow wins. They do like to take it fairly easy and then play for late game. Like when it comes to their macro, when it comes to their decision making later on in the game, I think that has been one of their biggest strengths is Milky Way will just get ulted by JJ here. Whoa. And actually follows over the wall, finds a solo kill. JJ is having none of it. That E was fantastic. Sorry, was it a flash from JJ to find Milky Way? Milky Way who? Finds him in the river, assassinates him. Gonna take that red buff as a prize as well for his, uh, for his solo kill right there onto Milky Way. Now, I was literally just about to commend Milky Way on the way that he's been moving around the map every time they spotted JJ. He's been getting a neutral objective for himself, whether it's a skull grab, whether it's void grabs, whether it's the dragon. His movements on the map have been pretty immaculate. Uh, I'm glad I didn't say it because that would be probably considered as a caster curse. As you see, Milky Way is going to secure the skull grab, but at what cost, lovely flash. Dodges the charm with the W as well. Very, very good start from JJ. Oh, life might have overstepped on this one, though. That's pretty unfortunate. Free kill, basically. What is happening? Uh, they're, they're falling Much apart. Much, what is, is happening? Answer. They are falling apart. They are getting picked to pieces, and it's... <laughs> it's a pretty questionable place that they're, they're getting picked to pieces on. So that solo kill, what's been happening here is that that solo kill resulted in a lot of vision deep inside FPX's jungle. You should expect that, however, if you're FPX, you've just lost your red buff. There has to be vision behind enemy lines for EDG. With spotted out life, life walks in too far on his own to try and get vision himself for the upcoming Void Grab fight, sorry, uh, Rift Herald fight but ends up paying with his life because he's too far forward. No teammates around. However, FPX again with full control of the river. There are teleports on both top laners who are currently located towards the bot side of the map. And I think it's all hanging on the balance of whoever gets the first CC first from both teams will end up taking someone down. Here we go. JJ starting the fight off, but he's pretty squishy and taking down fast. Life trying to get out with his own life, but here comes Solo Kill behind enemy lines. Traded though, as Leave goes down and now Solo Kill being chased. Care can't find the charm. 
Solo kill gets out of the top side. It's still a win for FPX. Uh -oh. And they don't want to let him get away. He's trying to finish off this recall. Did they get there in time? Just about. Solo kill hit with the top charm. Xiao who is here, still has that all out if he wants to. But I mean, Solo kill <laughs> has nowhere to go. He's down. And Xiao who gets credit. Throws the equalizer at the end as well. Grabs the three caster minions. Not even the three, two caster minions at the back of this, uh, this minion away trying to push it create a little bit more time for his team that has fallen victims and again there is so much cc on the side of fpx the first person who moves in and gets caught dies jj literally engages on that one champion that has the most cc on the side of fpx a very very squishy wukong walks too far forward ends up going down and from there on out it was fpx just cleaning up house Oh, hang on, we've got another pick. Wink There's now more. taking a huge amount of damage from Milky Way. The crash down denies life's follow-up. Solar Flare on cooldown, but Care does not wait for cooldowns. Charging forwards and forcing a flash out from Wink. Yep, he does not care for any cooldowns. FPX looking for another neutral objective right there. That chase again nets them a lot of vision into enemy territory. They're going to use that Rift Trail for mid lane control. Oh, Solar Flare, they're going to go for a little bit more. Slow on to leave, but they don't chase for that. Doctum takes a Chain of Corruption, but he'll be okay. Where's this going? And we're just going to use huh? the Herald as a taxi. Back out of the plate as Shallow, who gets a bit of free time on the tower. Bot off of all of this mid pressure, and the Drake is being taken in the meantime by Milky Way. All right, I'm just going to say what happened earlier with Milky Way getting caught, Life getting caught. It was just a hiccup. That's very good stuff right there from FPX. They take the W from this fight. They establish some vision. They push forward into yeah. that bot lane quadrant. They have bot lane pushing. They have mid lane going down. They get a second dragon on the map. They're back at it. Just a hiccup. We've seen some FPX glimpses, I want to say, from Spring 3, 1, and 2. Currently from Milky Way. I'm not going to... Be completely blind in terms of care uh getting all that setup down for his jungler as well helping a lot with that early flash that was burnt onto the way that mid jungle duo has looked pretty pretty crisp in, in this particular game and fpx are back on track yeah i have to say i'm a little disappointed in the two teams today because uh, quite a few of these kills have been life or wink or milky way or jj just overstepping yep. a bit and getting picked alone like I would expect oh, no. Life and Milky Way and Wink and JJ to be a little more coordinated than that. Life and Milky Way this time grouping up, and it means that they are safer in getting this vision before Baron. And I love that they're shadowing also Care here. He has no tower behind him, even though Ari can be very elusive when it comes to chasing her down. You've got the ultimate, you've got the three charges, you've got the flash. FPX are making sure they are playing on the correct side of the map, shutting your top, uh, your mid lane while pushing top lane. And EDG, I think they have lost a lot of the control they had on the map. It is so important again to notice how much vision you lose when that mid lane tier one goes down. It gets very dangerous. Having assassins like Ari, having so much non committal long range engage with yeah. the Ash and the Leona ultimate as well. Those pockets of fog can be extremely dangerous to walk up as a carry and push out your way for EDG. So we've got a minute and a half till Baron's up, three minutes on Drake. Everything seems to have calmed down a little bit and the gold is still relatively even. It's a just under 2000 gold lead for FPX. This does feel like it's anyone's game right now. Talk me through the win cons again here, Georgia, because like, I, I feel like EDG, it, while it's not been the cleanest game ever, when it comes to the team fighting, that is one of their strengths. Oh, hang on, Arrow! Oh, oh good flash from crying. Ooh, he has the flash though, and you just mentioned what are the win conditions for FPX. They've got such simple win conditions. Pin someone down, assassinate them with the Ari, start the resets going for the Ari in the Viego snowball the fight. Crying has just become the number one target on a wanted poster. Chalahu who taking a bit of pressure on the bottom side, but he is Kisante and he respects the potential dive. So if away, he'll be okay. We'll be a tower for EDG though. So nice stuff from them. Straight up by Care on the top side. Chain of Corruption comes down onto Milky Way. Leave is just 1v1ing the enemy jungler. <laughs> no interest in teammates coming out from EDG's AD carry. I mean, Milky Way will take this. Yes, you lose your ultimate for this, but you get another tower top lane. Again, crying, losing his flash, life. 
perhaps an overstep. He'll be Doctors fine for now. Too. Maybe Wink is overstepping at this point. It's 4v4 on the top side. Both top laners have TP available. Baron is up in five seconds time. And so mid prio becomes a real big deal. It's going to be lead Ooh. engaged upon TP behind enemy lines as well. Doctor trying to chase up as Care follows up, gets the charm. And that's going to be Wink going down. Can leave, well, live up to his name and leave. No, oh. he can't, because it's a snipe from Doctum and Shaolahu to knock it out of the park. Dogdom and in particular life have been incredible with the engages. Life with the ultimate forcing the cleanse, forcing the flash, following it up. EDG in shambles right here. FPX with very, very decisive plays on the map. Again, Crying cannot walk up too far. He just lost his flash. They see life on the, uh, I'm going to call it the catwalk of death right there. Every single time a carry walks that. It's just a very easy pickings for enemy team, especially when you have so much lockdown and FBX. They bundle, oh my God. <laughs> they bundle up as one. They're th literally throwing their bodies towards and EDG and it's working. That arrow is so depressing for Lee. Oh, wink. Oh, wink. You're in so much trouble. Can he get away with this one? Blast cone's pretty big. Okay, yeah, he gets out. The thing is, right, Leave normally would be able to dodge the arrow, but as he sees it, he's in blast cone animation. And because it's such a long jump, he doesn't get control of his character before the arrow catches up and clips him. Nice arrow, though, from Doctor. Really good punish. EDG, they've got to group up to use these ults together. FBX again with quite a bit of vision already. In the river, we've got neutral objective coming up. Life and Shaolahu, such huge frontline tanks for their team, especially that level 13 Cassante with two items locked in the inventory EDG. How do you walk through that choke point with a Leona yeah. threatening and engage? Pick and snowball for FPX. Wombo combo for EDG. They found one, oh, bit of damage wink. onto life. It's going to be Chain of Corruption coming out too. Oh, and oh, oh. might just go down. The damage from long range is insane. Now equalizer now, forcing care out of the play. Charm does go through, but no real follow-up. And suddenly FPX, they said, forget the Wombo combo. Turns out EDG can pick two. Wow, Wink debated everyone from FPX. He kept dancing back and forth, threatening and engage. Meanwhile, through the wall, everything was throwing up life. Life, of course, had no ultimate because he did have to commit it onto killing leave in the previous skirmish that happened. And EDG woke out with a dragon. Again, you'll see Wink hops over the wall and he's just threatening and engaged. He keeps very close to the wall so he can W over if he needs to get out. And his life dies to all the long range engage. Sorry, poke. Gorgeous stuff coming out from EDG. Really, really nice work to, to find that option. Sweeper spots there. JJ and Wink. Care goes for it. Charm immediately. Wink the target crash down away from the play. This would be a monumental Ooh. pick. And it starts the snowball for Milky Way. Steals that body, but it's Baron that they're looking towards. Ah, uh, this could definitely be Baron for FPX. Crying and Solo Kill are going to have to work overtime to try and figure it out. Crying is trying to throw some spells oh, in there, JJ. They have to face check it so hard. JJ goes in to try and trade it onto Doctor. And he oh. does it. He finds the kill somehow. Wait. Milky Way falls to. How are EDG doing this? 3v3 now as they've evened things up. Shaolahu charges forward. But Leave is just chasing him down. The long range damage. A terrible equalizer. I'm not going to lie to you. But <laughs> EDG somehow flipped the fight. That was a fantastic backline dive from JJ, let's not forget that EDG are playing with four carries on the map. JJ might be playing the Wukong and is one of the primary engages for EDG to set up those fights. But Wukong is primarily a damage dealer as well for EDG. Finds that back and assassinates Dogtam as well. You've taken one of the three carries down. He takes a second one. Let's see this again. Crying has to flash out. They overreach. However, JJ finds the backline. Doktam and Milky Way both out the picture. The re-enabling of the R that was left onto the, the mirror image of JJ onto Milky Way, pinning him down yet again. That was fantastic stuff for me to G's jungler. Yeah, looked like JJ was out of position. He's not out of position. You're out of position, Doctor. <laughs> hey, Call an ambulance. Right there. You think you've got someone. No, 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 no. You're the one that's caught. Nice play from JJ. 7 to 10. 
gold is pretty much even. It's 1,000 in favor of FBX, but at 25 minutes, 1,000 is nothing. Look at Care's inventory. He's just a little bit away from a death count. This is a very strong Ari at this stage of the game. Munch, I'm not going to lie. This series is a little messy. It yeah. has come down to who overextends, who gets caught, how do we want to play teamfights? No one knows, but if you get caught, you die. And it has been the case for the entire game. If somebody walks a little bit too far forward and they end up getting changed to seed from either team, they end up dying. So in terms of win conditions, I think both of them have pretty simple wombo combos that they want to execute. A little bit more single target for the uh, for the side of FPX, but they do have a lot of resets to follow up. The arrow's going to go wide there. For EDG, it's more about the more AOE wombo combo that you can have with the with the Wukong, with the Rel being engaged, is the carpet being uh, pulled under their under their feet with the with the equalizer as well. So EDG are looking more for the clump of FPX, yep. whilst FPX are looking for more of the isolated targets that they can assassinate. So FPX, they did have control of the Baron area, they managed to get a blue trinket out, but they end up resetting. EDG will get control for a moment. I imagine FPX will still be able to repeat that previous performance, get mid prio, and then brute force things in terms of Baron control. But I'm keeping my eyes on that Dragon timer as well, because Drake will be coming up in just over a minute, and both teams with two Drakes currently, I don't think either of them wants to give away a third and i feel like if you're fpx you might actually want to do this because i feel like death cap on ari is going to hurt so bad especially since you're playing for single target picks if you're fpx you might want to take control over the top side of the map put down your words for baron create vision control and gain as much time Ooh. as possible for that ari to finish that, that death was cap. That was both blue trinkets used by Crown and Leave at the same time on Baron. So yes, they know Baron's not happening right now, but they're out of blue trinkets. They're out of ways to check the Baron without using their faces. I mean, they're still there, the blue trinkets, and FPX has no idea how those blue trinkets were uh, were placed down there. Therefore, they didn't clean them up. FPX now, they're gonna move over and shift their vision control towards that bot side. Arrow is back up for Dogtam. It's a fairly short cooldown. And the engage options are still the same for FBX. Pick up one single target, chain CC them. EDG are looking for the clump. FBX trying to contend with the mid prior. It's not happening. Oh, leave caught by the solar flare. That's his cleanse, but life has to flash just to keep himself healthy. But now FBX get to move in onto this wave themselves. They both clear Ooh. it as EDG move in towards the Baron. Another arrow comes in. But solo kill happy to just tank that one for now. Equalizer comes across the team. They're looking for an engage, but the charm from Care keeps everyone away. A lot of ultimates just being blasted out by both teams. Shall I FBX who? have thrown everything, but nothing is sticking. So EDG get to walk in for free. Cyclone still up. Quay ult still up. Rel ult still up. FBX kept pushing buttons forward. The Ash ult, the Leona ult, the Ari ult with the charm, and just nothing was sticking. I look like a little bit of a desperation attempt, if you ask me, Munch. Trying to get a pick to happen, but it's much easier when you're playing through the choke points. You pull back into this dragon, you yeah. try to threaten with a soul point if you're FBX, and you're inviting EDG through those choke points where it's much easier to land an arrow, to land a charm, to try and pick up that one target that's when I walk in first through these choke points. However, FBX a little bit lost again. Uh, yeah. In the translation, I want to say an EDG will sneak in a third one. I think one of the big things is like when you look at the composition from FPX, your engage is not really that good when everyone's grouped up. It's hard to follow up yeah. on an arrow that hits one of five people. Oh, life might just be caught here. Oh, dear. It's a disaster. Wink. Also low, but it's still a pick for EDG, and they're looking for more as well. Shala, who TPs in. He'll get away. That's a million TPs used to get into this play. Shala, who is overstepped. He's not as tanky as he thinks he is and forced away. EDG can take control Ooh. of the Baron area now. Cool. Kara taking a huge chunk right there from Varus as well. EDG do not have any ultimates available to their name. The Equalizer will be coming up onto Rumble. But they establish some vision into this river. Again, life overextends. It has happened one too many times. Four, to be exact, in this particular game ends up being punished by EDG. Now, don't get me wrong. I did say that EDG is looking for the clumps, but that's in team fights. If you walk up to them as an individual, they have more than enough damage yeah. in CC to take you down. They did commit everything onto life. They committed the Wukong ult, their ult, their rail ult as well. They committed so much just to kill the support. But very wisely, again, EDG is one of those teams that 
will weigh out the situation and be like, listen, we have no ultimates available. We're going to pull back at this point. There are many item breakpoints that they're still looking towards, specifically that void stuff coming through for Huey. Care has that death cap. He has TP advantage. I'd really like to see FPX trying to use the side lanes a little bit more since they have so much pick potential. Their best bet is getting people in translation, but they're really scared to leave this barren area. They know EDG will happily snap that up given the opportunity. Oh, Doctor, you're playing with fire there. We'll step forwards. We'll actually protect the control ward. I feel like it's been very difficult for FPX to play sidelines because every time Life walks up to try and establish some vision for someone to push that wave on a sideline, he gets caught. You cannot be on a sideline if you do not have vision inside that quadrant, quadrant that you're pushing next to. Now, again, FPX and EDG are playing the Fog of War game. There are plenty of blue wards on EDG side. Let's see if FPX can bait the engage that they're looking for. The a ramp continues. The battle for the mid wave continues. FPX will finish it off first. They get to maintain their control of the Baron side of the battle. It's still two minutes until that Drake comes up, so no trade available for EDG. They've got to try and check. They've got to try and get some vision in here. But FPX still sticking around. Ooh, EDG care. control. There's one Scryer's Orb. They've got three across their team. They've got three. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Gear might yeah, have to well, ult right here. He's going to have to burn his ult. He had to ult. He had to flash. I mean, Wait, I, like, I like the idea of cutting off the wave, but you can't just for walk into five people. Jamai, who now oh, in trouble? Man. Wink finds the engage. Care the target equalizer in. Care is gone. EDG starts strong, and Milky Way's used his own ultimate. Oh. JJ can finish the job on the back line. EDG find everything. Care, a disastrous cutoff of the wave, sends FBX packing. Care had zero deaths this entire time, whilst having 100% kill participation. He missteps once pushes too far forward to cut the wave, to try and take control over that mid lane. Let's watch this again. This has been a very much a back and forth. One last charge on that Ares ultimate. It wasn't going to be enough. The CC locked down so much from the set of EDG and Luka JJ again in the back lane. He's been an absolute nuisance for FPX carries. That Kuk Wukong has been massive the entire game again. Off of the back of one misstep, I feel like it, it, it's been the story for the entire from the entire game so far. Somebody missteps, they get caught. Care was the one that has been very, very careful throughout the entire game, I want to say. He missteps once, that punish netted a Baron for EDG. Oh, Massive life. swing for EDG here. Our oh, life has stepped up over and over again this game. Will survive this time around. Some honey fruit there for him to heal up a little bit. Drake coming up in 14 seconds. Remember, EDG already have three for themselves. This could be sold for EDG. It's looking really good for EDG right now as JJ dives forward, gets a couple of cooldowns out. Mid prior for EDG. Oof. They can just start this Drake up on cooldown. The poke coming out. Oh, life oh. just altered himself. Oh, God. Life is having a bit of a wonky game, it has to be said. EDG start the Drake and FBX. I think they realize they just have no way of starting a fight if leona has got no cooldowns. It, there's just no way to do it. EDG oh. are going to get Soul here. They've got Baron. They've got everything. That was so painful to watch. The miss flash with the missed ult. Clearly, he was trying to make a pick towards this bush to try and help FBX to get into this river. Potentially grab a pick, maybe stop the Soul from going over to EDG. A misposition. Of the okay. cursor might have potential oh. picks potential picks leave is the target they're going to be able to find a pick onto the enemy ad carry maybe fbx can snowball this at least it's a reprieve maybe it's more shallow who hunting but he won't find anything fbx have a chance now down mid they still have the baron so it's going to be very difficult for fbx to siege with all the baron up minions that will be coming over the side of edg a little bit of a mispositioning right there from leave is going to cost them actually the baron buff because you had so much pressure, you've got so much poke, you've got so much punish underneath the tower. The poke from Varus, the poke for Crying Sway was going to be unbearable for FPX to deal with underneath the tower. However, that pick, I feel like, has completely negated the Baron power for EDG. Oh no. Oh, life. Oh, oh, life. 
it was clearly was a mis a... misplacement of the cursor. Uh, he wanted I, to go you know, forward. He, he ended up clicking backwards. I think he maybe just uh, hit F and R at the same time, tried to flash away and accidentally tapped his ultimate. It's... You know, do you know the little the little emote in Twitch chat? Um, it's actually called Life. And it's a little Pepe that's sitting in front of a sunset, just contemplating life, just looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> and it just reminded me of seeing that play. That was all I could think about. I mean, it, it's the sunset. He's playing Leona. It just makes sense. It just makes sense yeah. on so many levels. Contemplating life as well after this play. <laughs> yeah, definitely. My goodness, that's a bit... Uh, honestly, life has had a pretty rough game for himself. I'm... Yeah. Oh. oh, hang on! This is a moment and a half right here! What an opportunity! Dogdom snipes him from a million miles away and FPX pounce immediately! Again, huge from FPX. Yet another pick. Last time it was on leave, this time on crying. They will be sieging down. They do have dashes onto this area. They could potentially be looking for another charm. Charm is going to miss. However, there are no objectives on the map that they can very easily take. Even though crying is down, there is so much wave clear. You can even put down the equalizer if you're not sure you're going to be saving the tower. But the poke virus together with the rumble, they clear the waves pretty quickly. They do. I mean, look at... <laughs> they got less than a quarter of the tower's health done. Okay, hunting for a charm, I think. FPX basically hunting for another pick. Maybe Wink could be a target, but one step too far forwards. And remember, Chemtech Soul in the pockets of EDG. It's really hard to finish off that first target now. Yeah. Chain of Corruption. EDG. Oh Ooh, my life, lord, that life. damage on life. I mean, leave us a few items at this point, it's fair to say. Another chop Holy. coming out from him. He's a sniper. That's like almost a third of his HP gone. Where, did he, where does he shoot it from? From Red Buff. They see him in mid lane, onto this ward placed. Then they immediately TP on this. They throw Leona ult. Everyone just sprints <laughs> towards crying. Anything and everything goes for FPX. I mean, they've had two picks back to back. One of them negated the Baron that EDG had. And this time around, oh. this didn't necessarily net them anything. Solo kill. I mean, Kier yeah, has a few more dashes. Yeah, so, he'll be yeah. he'll be fine. However, I, I want to be a little bit judgmental here towards FPX. Because every single time they do get the pick on the map, there is no vision established from them. They get the pick onto crying, they push that mid lane tower, they chip a fourth of it, maybe. However, the next neutral objective that's coming up is Baron, and there was not a single ward that was placed down from the sort of FPX. There's only one inside their own jungle that will allow them to walk into this bush. However, they do not know what they're actually walking into. Very little vision. <laughs> The one minor positive is they've got an axe. So Hawkshot <laughs> helps, uh, helps deal with that slight issue. I will say that play from Cryon there, or the play on Cryon there, is like a mid play safe. <laughs> and look at mid lane. It's like a TP on the ward <laughs> as the stun hits. The solar flare comes in. Uh, tough one. Full CC chain there is FBX now. Oh, solar flare goes a little wide from life. Just hunting for opportunities. That solar flare on cooldown right as Baron sports. Uh, crying doesn't have his flash. He just had to blow that. So FPX, I feel like, have a very, very clear target for themselves. You see how far back crying is playing behind all of his teammates. FPX, they need to deep into fog of war and try to make a pick through a choke point. Trying to get poke damage down. Trying to just push this wave in, and they will be able to win mid prior. They can maybe just escort this cannon up mid lane. But here we go. JJ, the target of the arrow. He dashes out as Wink goes in. Equalizer oh, across the team as well. But it's not quite enough to finish any health bars. And both teams back away once more. There are teleports on the set of FBX. Carries us trying to find somewhere that's safe to seconds. back and TP back. Elder Dragon spawning onto the map. This is getting real tense. I feel like both teams are nervous. Both teams really struggling to find their foothold in the game. This is about as close as they come. Dogdom chunked massively. EDG hunting for him here. And JJ finishes the kill. Life will be next. But Care gets a charm and saves his support. The blast comes, but Lee finishes the job. You're going nowhere. EDG are going to be able to secure the Baron here. What in the world? Care tries to stop the wave first, dies, gives EDG the kill. Doctum walks up, tries to stop the wave, gives that kill over to EDG. EDG get Baron. What in the world has been going on? Wink, very 
confidently face checking that he has an entire team behind him. Where this is a numbers advantage for EDG and FBX have started the fight. They're hunting for Wink. Is it worth it? Is the question. Resets for Milky Way. Wait, what? Oh, they can make it happen. Milky Way triple kill and a three v four what? turns it into a fourth. And Care looking to finish the job. Solo kill, desperately trying to escape. Somehow a miracle arrives for FBX. And of course, that miracle would have to be named Milky Way. The spark, the shine that we were looking from Spring Split is right here. What an insane performance. The arrow being shot in the mid lane, in the mid lane, solo kill, solo kill. Oh, Ooh. dodges the arrow, but barely. That's going to be breaking open Ooh. the base here. FX, the Elder is They've up. still got 20 seconds of <gasps> death times of EDG. And like you say, Elder dragging up on the map. I cannot believe that FBX off of the back of that. They might be winning themselves. That first game, Elder Dragon is going to pretty much negate again the Baron buff that EDG have. What is going on? I felt like this was the most confident face check of all time. They're like, we have four members. We have four members. We have Ji and Wukong. Like, what in the world is going on? That backline access from the Cassante. And all of these resets coming through from Midway. The second you get Rel here, it's pretty much GG. So much CC coming through that champion. So much follow-up. He grabs Wukong as well. Absolutely I mean, Krang, disgusting. Krang okay, his way wasn't that great. I care at the end there. Krang got absolutely his, his way not that great, okay? We need a little bit of a practice on the way from Milky Way. But, hey, but I mean, the rest care, was immaculate. Care <laughs> and Milky Way, absolutely phenomenal stuff right there. And, you know... The setup from Shalahu as well. At the end of the day, it turns into an Elder Dragon for FPX. And remember how important this game is in terms of the group, in terms of make it into Group A in the second stage of the LPL. Every single game counts, and this matchup specifically could just about decide this group. EDG being pushed against the ropes now by FPX. They've got Elder for another minute and a half, and they want to break this game open. Yeah, there's 30 seconds onto Baron, but only on solo kill. They need to keep solo kill on whichever lane is pushing to Baron up these minions as much as possible to not allow seeds from FPX. The second they get underneath your tower with that Elder Dragon and they pull the trigger, somebody will disappear. After the mid lane inhibitor drops as well, you need to get solo kill towards the wave. Oh, oh ho, ho, ho. arrow goes slightly wide. That's a route on life as well, but it won't matter too much. Remember, still a minute on Elder Dragon, realistically. EDG can't go for an even fight maybe they could find a pick if someone oversteps but you can't go for a straight up 5v5 at this point super's pushing in mid lane but the waves are not synced up right now it does make it much more difficult for fbx it's just so scary though walking up to any of those walls all of that single target cc single target assassination potential that fpx have it's going to be huge how fast can you clear the wave edg because they're coming for you just gonna slam it. The cannon is gonna help out here. FPX will finally break that second in him tower. Shalahu charging forwards. Charm goes in. JJ into the back line here. Shalahu survives as it was the clone that got caught by the all out. Wink, Charm, they need to finish a kill. They need to start the resets. And Milky Way gets the first one. Care diving into the back line as well. Arrow dives in. Crying. Gone. JJ on the last leg of life. The solo kill falls as well. FPX on the back of a miracle have flipped the game. Please? And they take Leave. down EDG. Leave sniping, Leave. but the arrows are dodge. The apple stays on the head, and the Nexus is bare. Leave takes another GA available for Milky Way. Shallow on the Nexus. FBX on the back of a miracle. Blaze into a win. Wow. What a. He just, he just left. He's like, yeah, I'm out of here. Get me out of this game. Reset me. We're going into game two. Milky Way and Care. What fantastic performances from minute one. The second that flash was down onto crying, Milky Way and Care run away with that early game. This was so messy from yeah. both of those teams. This was catch someone central, grab a dragon for it, grab two barons for it, grab an elder for it. It was so messy and so chaotic and it leads cleaning up because FPX had clear winners again in the early game and they just could not figure out how to facilitate them for that game. A lot of mistakes being made by both teams, but in the end, FPX 
they fight a like miraculous play and <laughs> you said at the start of the day we want to see that spark back for fbx if a win like He's that back. isn't a spark i don't know what is we're going to jump into a break and then we'll see if they can keep this going the phoenix may be rising once more